Howdy, y'all. Call me Reverend. And then peep this good, good OU team I have for you with five legendaries on it. I know that's everybody's favorite, but don't worry, it does have some pretty neato sets that make it slightly cooler than it looks. It has like Rest Sleep Talk Keldeo, which might not actually be technically a neato set at this point because I'm pretty sure it is actually standard as strange as that sounds, but it is an incredible Keldeo set and it's definitely my favorite one to run at the moam. It also has Power Herb, Solar Beam, Heatran, which is definitely not standard, but also definitely not going to be doing anything against this motherfucker's team. I don't actually get the chance to use Solar Beam at all this battle, but it is there and it is incredibly useful for luring in bulky water types like Rotom Wash and Quagsire and taking them out for the real money maker of the team, which is going to be the Mega Aerodactyl, which is a Pokemon that I think I may have seen like twice on the ladder over the course of the entire generation, which I guess makes sense because it's UU, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident that it's not borderline, and I also really don't know why. Like, I don't understand how it's not just completely broken in UU because it is fantastic in OU. It's been like A or A plus on the viability rankings the entire generation. It's got that Primo Kush speed tier that just outruns everything and lets you spam your amazing physical move pool that pretty much all takes advantage of Tough Claws. It also checks the shit out of Talonflame and Tornadus, which coincidentally lets you use your pretty cute support move pool with shit like Taunt and Stealth Rock and Roost, but none of that is the reason why Mega Aerodactyl is good. Mega Aerodactyl is so good because it goes for the fucking throat. So with that in mind, I was like, oh, I gotta go for the throat too. I gotta go for the throat immediately and then go ahead and like blow a load in my pants right out the gate, lead with the Monarch, which was really poorly calculated because I would have had to have switched out of like four of the Pokemon that he could have led with. And he brings his Lati in on my DeviantArt account because of that and then makes a really good double switch out into the Hoopa, which covered me going into either Heatran or Mew on the Lati, and then gets a crit Hyperspace Fury, which, like, I guess I burned him on the first Scald, so I can't be too mad, but that crit definitely mattered and means that I can't set up my Stealth Rocks, which would have been incredibly useful for the Charizard, because Charizard X kind of auto-wins on this team. But since he Hyperspace Furied instead of Drain Punch, the defense debuff is going to mean that I can kind of Pursuit with Impunity, which is good because that's going to get a free kill against pretty much any of the Pokemon that I would ever have out. Gonna go ahead and Calm Mind up against this Lottie, which lets me tank the Draco Meteor and kill it with a Hidden Power Ice, which looks kind of like Frag Taji, but that was not a valuable kill at all because it's not like I was actually in danger of it defogging away the rocks that I don't have. I need to go out into Boy from Brazil on the Alakazam and then go for a taunt immediately just so that if he switched into his Charizard on that, it wouldn't be able to set up a Dragon Dance. And then I just go for a knockoff because the Skarmory was out and now I'm kind of like shitting my pants until it actually turns out to be Charizard Y. I'm like, okay, that's way less scary, but it's still a Charizard Y. I taunt it on this turn to just, just like stop it from getting two Dragon Dances, even though Charizard X only needs one to sweep me anyway, and then just let Boy from Brazil die so I can get a switch into Electric Worry, and then go for a really bad Thunderbolt. That was like a really bad play. I should have just Volt Switched, and I knew that wasn't going to kill it, but if he stayed in, I could have just sacked my Lando T, because it's not like it's doing much for me. He makes like an even worse decision and just lets his Skarmory die, but I also go for the worst Calm Mind in the universe and just let him get up a free later Spikes. The Alakazam gets a kill, but I can go ahead and Pursuit Trap that with the Monarch Season 6 Craigasm. Being able to Pursuit Trap Alakazam without having to worry about just catching a raw Focus Blast if you guess wrong is a really good feel. And then I can go ahead and switch out my DeviantArt account. He could have double switched into his Charizard Y that turn and survived like any water move, but it would have put it to the HP where I can Pursuit Trap it with Aerodactyl even if he stays in. And then between Aerodactyl and Lando T, I would have been able to beat his Lando T. So don't let the Aerodactyl fool you. You were definitely watching an OU battle because the optimal outcome for it was a Landorus T ditto. The way that Aerodactyl's like elbows are articulated really, really doesn't do it for me. Like I am 
I am not a huge fan. So, looking at this dude's team, Boy from Brazil kind of fucks it up real good. So I'm just going to go ahead and lead off with it. And then take hecka passive damage from knocking off the Garchomp's Rocky Helmet. And I'm about to take even more because I catch this rando Toxic, which I was really mad about because I thought that this Mew had way more speed investment than it actually does. But it's not like a huge tragedy because I still taunt it before Stealth Rocks can get set up against me. And then I get Dragon Tailed out into the best possible thing, the Monarch, so I can go ahead and snipe the Garchomp with Ice Fang and not have to worry about Stealth Rock at all, which is amazing because it's a real pain in the ass for Mega Aerodactyl. Normally, I would switch into Boy from Brazil in on Azumarill, but since it got toxic, I need to make sure that it's healthy to deal with the Mega Metacham, so I just sack off Kitten Mittens, a real tragedy, Landorus Therian, not doing anything in two OU battles. I don't even know what fucking game I'm playing right now. Go ahead and set up a Calm Mind, because I thought that he was going to switch out into his Latias, but does just let the Azumarill get roasted. And then I catch a U-turn from what I assume is Choice Band Talonflame, which I have not seen in a dang minute. I don't know why you thought you could set up your Manafi against a Heatran, you doofus. Gonna go ahead and catch a Solar Beam for that. Switch in my DeviantArt account, because I'm not scared of anything, and then just go for a Secret Sword. The Talonflame comes out, and I'm like, oh, birds never use bird moves, they always U-turn. And catch a Brave Bird for my fucking insolence, but... I'm not really too upset about that, because he still had a full health Lati anyway, and I can just go ahead and Pursuit Trap the Talonflame. Bring out Boy from Brazil in on the Metacham, easy peasy, and I know that he is going to want to switch out, so just go for a Soft Weld on the Switch, so we can do that same dance again later. Going to go ahead and bring out Electric Worry on the Manafi, catch a Shadow Ball, and then I am going to... Go ahead and proc its Wackenberry with this Thunderbolt, which is obviously not going to save it at 25% HP, but I love how that was just like a microcosm of how weirdly specific every Manafi set is. Like, you know exactly what Manafi's going to do, but just based on that dude's team, like, it had Shadow Ball because it has trouble with Mega Slowbro, and it had Wackenberry because it has trouble with Electrics. Like, you know that Manafi's always going to tail glow against you, but it always does something just slightly weird enough to throw you off. Go ahead and switch out into Gnome Enthusiast. That was, like, really unnecessary, but I wasn't sure if a fake out plus a bullet punch was going to kill me. I'm gonna go ahead and take this bullet punch and then just go ahead and finish off the Metacham with Aerial Ace, finally actually using a flying move. If, like, if Mega Aerodactyl got, like, a legitimate flying move it would be pretty goddamn amazing because like it gets tough claws which is probably the best offensive ability in the game outside of like huge power and pure power obviously but within like the next tier of offensive abilities tough claws is fucking amazing it's like a sheer force for just every contact move with no downside but the problem with aerodactyl is it doesn't boost its stab moves like like, it boosts Aerial Ace, obviously, but it turns Aerial Ace from a really shitty stab move into a, like, really shitty stab move. It's still really fucking bad, because it's, like, what? Less power than Crunch before stab? Like, okay, cool. But it does boost, like, all of its coverage moves. It makes it play really interestingly, because, like, it's definitely... It's not a wall breaker, obviously. It's got a really modest attack for a Mega, and then its ability doesn't boost its stab moves to any reasonable level, but it does boost, like, all of its coverage moves, and it learns a shitload of them. It's got a really interesting move pool. Like, I had no idea that it could learn Pursuit until I saw it in the Importable when I stole this team. Hey, I never would've used Pursuit anyway, because I'm, like, never confident in my ability to not be terrible and call switches correctly. I would almost always use Aqua Tail over it in that slot because Aqua Tail like consolidates you hitting Hippowdon, Landris Therian, and Heatran in one move slot. And you could run that over Ice Fang on this set, but then you miss out hitting bulky Garchomp, which is pretty pretty important. Bulky ground's pretty fucking good in the meta. Don't let Ralph Smoggin know that I let you in on that little secret 